Over the past years, we have been seeing news and headlines on how coral reefs are disappearing all around the world. Usually this is blamed on human activities like pollution and climate change. But how real is it? Are coral reefs really in that much trouble? Let's look at what the evidence tells us. To understand coral reefs and what might be happening to them, we first need to understand the animals that give them their names. Corals. Yeah, that's right. Corals, just like us, are animals. Animals whose ancestors lived more than 500 million years ago. So they've seen a lot. They have since evolved into the complex structures we see today, coming in a variety of shapes, colors, and sizes, and creating these vibrant and beautiful underwater cities. There are even deep sea corals. Deep sea corals, typically less known, are part of a group of corals known as soft corals. However, today we will mostly focus on shallow water corals that build the coral reefs that we usually imagine when we talk about coral reefs. And these are called hard corals. Now see this little guy here? That is one coral polyp. And the large structure we typically call a coral is actually a colony of several of these polyps, all genetically identical. That is why we call corals, both hard and soft, colonial animals. Because all these little genetically identical polyps live together in a skeleton they produce forming these structures that we see. Honestly, as cool as it is, this colony situation is not even my favorite thing about corals. It's their symbiotic relationship with these tiny microalgae called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae live inside the tissues of the coral polyps in a mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. In this relationship, the tiny algae perform photosynthesis, converting sunlight into energy and provide nutrients such as glucose, glycerol and amino acids to the coral polyps, essential for their growth and health. In fact, Corals get around 85% of their nutrition from these little guys. In return, the coral polyps offer the zooxanthellae a protected environment to live and access to their waste products that the algae need for photosynthesis. Now let's put a pin on these little microalgae, because they will be important later on in the video and important to answer the title of this video. In essence, corals are the foundation of coral reefs, hence the name. <laughs> coral reefs. They create the physical structure that supports the diverse range of marine life. Their diverse skeletons form complex habitats with nukes and crannies that provide shelter, breeding grounds, and hunting spaces for many, many species. In 2015, it was estimated that approximately 32% of all named marine species occur on coral reefs at some point during their life. But even animals that are not directly dependent on coral reefs might be indirectly dependent on them. For example, large predators like different species of tuna, dolphins, and shark might not live in coral reefs, but prey on species that do depend on coral reefs for their survival. I don't think I need to convince you anymore that coral reefs are important and it would be a tragedy to lose them. Not only because we would lose amazing beautiful ecosystems with tons of biodiversity, but it would also be tragic for the health of our planet, the health of our oceans, and the existence of seafood, if you eat seafood, as millions of people around the world do. It would be bad if coral reefs were to disappear. But are they disappearing? In the mid-1980s, studies started popping up reporting large-scale coral bleaching. But bleaching, and now this is important, is not the same as coral death. Do you remember those little microalgae I put a pin on? Well, bleaching occurs when corals expel them from their bodies typically because of some kind of stressor. When this happens, the coral becomes white. Because the zooxanthellae produce most of the coral food, bleaching weakens the corals and makes them more susceptible to disease and mortality. However, it does not always result in death. Polyps can recover the zooxanthellae if the conditions allow it, allowing them to thrive to see another day. In fact, it is not uncommon for corals to regain the zooxanthellae and kind of live again. If, however, they don't, they will eventually starve and die. 
There is no question that coral bleaching often precedes coral mortality and is one of the main causes of coral death around the world. The question now is, are these bleaching events occurring at a rate that does not allow coral reefs to recover? Coral bleaching occurs due to environmental stress, primarily as a survival mechanism. The exact reasons why this happens are complex and involve various physiological processes. But the overarching idea is that the relationship between the corals and the microalgae becomes detrimental under stress conditions. And we do know that the primary stressor causing coral bleaching is... Wait for it! Elevated water temperatures. Surprise, said no one. Different species have different heat tolerances, but on average, when the water reaches temperatures higher than 30 degrees Celsius, the zoocentelli are expelled. The reason is not yet 100% understood, but we know that a couple of things happen when water temperatures are high. The photosynthetic efficiency of zoocentelli is impaired, and they produce harmful reactive oxygen species that can damage the coral cells. Also, stress conditions disrupt normal exchange of food and energy between the coral and its symbiotic algae. This means that the energy costs of maintaining this stress symbiosis might outweigh the benefits, prompting the corals to expel the zoocentelli from their bodies until conditions are suitable again. In this case, until water temperatures are lower. And unfortunately, over the past decades, mean ocean temperature has been increasing. It's a fact, whether we like it or not. And I personally don't. I, I don't like it. I would rather it were not true. But the truth is that this temperature increase has led to four more massive coral bleaching events all around the world since the 80s. One of them started just last year, following record-breaking ocean temperatures. And besides these, there has also been an increase in regional bleaching events. Take Florida, for example. Water temperatures there reached almost 34 degrees Celsius last summer, and unfortunately, many corals didn't make it. They bleached and eventually died. El Nino, which is a natural event that increases surface ocean temperatures, is partially to blame. In fact, many coral bleaching events seem to be related somehow with this phenomenon. However, the frequency and severity of El Nino events is expected to increase during this century. I mean, it already is. We are seeing record-breaking water temperatures all around the world this year. And also, El Nino has existed for a very long time. Mass coral bleaching events, on the other hand, like the one we are witnessing this year, did not seem to exist before the 80s and 90s, even during El Nino years. See, the problem is that for the corals to regain their zoocentelli and not starve to death after a couple of weeks, the water conditions need to go back to the non-stressful temperatures. And unfortunately, with increasing heat wave frequency and overall increasing in water temperatures, the corals simply cannot recover in time before starving to death. We've been seeing coral bleaching events sometimes happen in consecutive years in some areas. So even the corals that survive one heat wave might have to endure another one while still weak and recovering from the previous one. The Status of Coral Reefs of the World 2020 report estimates that approximately 14% of the world's coral reefs were lost between 2009 and 2018 alone. Gosh, I wonder what is causing this massive destruction of an ecosystem that has existed for millions of years. Hmm. If only we had massive amounts of scientific evidence telling us exactly what's causing it and exactly what we would need to do to stop it. Too bad we don't. Jokes aside, warming water temperatures due to climate change that lead to coral bleaching are one of the main reasons for the decline of coral reefs. But there are also other compounding issues, like pollution, bad fishing practices, and ocean acidification, also due to climate change, by the way. So here is the ultimate answer. Yes, coral reefs are declining at an alarming rate. There's just no denying that. And if anyone says otherwise, they are either lying or more likely don't really know what they're talking about. 
I was recently at a conference with more than 600 coral scientists from all around the world. And whether the coral reefs of the world really are disappearing was not really a discussion point. We do discuss the extent of the badness and how we can prevent it from happening further, but we don't really question if it's happening because it is. You could feel the dread in some of the presentations in this conference. People, researchers, and people who depend on these ecosystems and witness their decay every single day are worried. So am I. However, with that said, this is not the end, and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Various conservation and restoration projects are working tirelessly to solve this issue and prevent it from getting worse. We now have the tools and knowledge to make a difference with advances in coral breeding, the establishment of marine protected areas, and innovative restoration techniques showing promising results. But it is still very important to continue fighting for the reduction of carbon emissions to reduce ocean warming, because we can restore all we want. But if the water temperatures continue increasing, there might not be a future for these beautiful ecosystems. Call me optimistic if you want, but I think if we work together, we can solve this and we can prevent the worst from happening. Their fate is intertwined with our actions, and I see a lot of action happening. And that gives me hope. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.